Sarah Barn. I'm a contemporary mixed media artist. Um, and I wanted to talk to you about my different bodies of work and where they come from and um, what, um, I guess, motivates me to make them. And I really can't uh, explain it. It's always very tough for me to talk about my work because it comes from a place that I myself can't explain. It's it's When I think back, um, it's always been this place where is beyond words for me it's almost like a download like i just get flashes of color i get titles i get images it's just like it's like it's like that you know and it's like you can't i can't i can't explain it it comes from somewhere uh that you can't put into words uh i just know that i'm compelled to make it once it enters my mind um it'll come out of nowhere sometimes it's a very clear image and sometimes it's just the title and the title leads to the piece and sometimes it's just pieces of a piece and it slowly starts to come together as I allow the energy to like move through me, allow myself to take in whatever's meant to come. And it just keeps pushing me until the piece is finished. And I, there's, it's just something I can't explain. And there's been so many times that I've wanted to like stop and, and you know, it, it wasn't working out. The last sculpture that I made one of the last sculptures that I made this year um, was called I Surrender. And there was a million times that I just um, wanted to stop. I felt like it's not working. The pieces aren't there. It's not really coming out the way I wanted to. And it wouldn't let me stop. It wouldn't let me stop. And I had to just keep going until the piece was done. And I was very clear that that force that was pushing me, that was compelling me to finish this piece was beyond anything that I could explain. Um, I have to make this work. That's the only way I can say it. I really, I really have to make this work. Um, and whatever I'm doing, I have to put it down, stop and start working on the piece. Like there's been times where I was really sick and I had a fever and I literally couldn't even um, walk. Like I was just really sick and I, 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 like something would come and I, I would have to come to my studio and, and move things around and, and piece something together and then go and pass out basically so i'm very clear that it's not about me and there's something that's um beyond me and it really um it's an energy that comes through me and, and uh requires me i guess asks me to make this work um besides that um uh, which i'm still figuring out and the more you know i become vegan and the more i become spiritual and the more I meditate and the more in tuned i become and, and calm and quiet the louder the voices are and the clearer whatever messages that I need to come through to me come and the pieces are getting more intricate more specific um and they've really just taken on life their, of their own and it's and of course you know my background's been um all those words that I'm so uncomfortable with immigrant and refugee I just feel like we're all human beings and we're all on this planet on this floating green and blue ball and none of us know how we got here or where we're going but we have so many stories that we've made up in order to feel safe and secure and comfortable and it never really quite gives us that feeling but we try so hard we try so hard to create a sense of belonging whether it's to a country uh, or to a religion or to a person or to an identity or whatever we constantly need to be like this is who i am this is what i'm here to do this is what i you know what i am and you know all these like identities and labels and and i just um i just i don't i find less and less of a need for it as i get older um i think definitely that my background with coming here um you know we left iran and we walked on foot for seven days and it was you know really crazy i have like very minimal memories it's just stuff that my parents have told me but it was really a traumatic trip from uh, Iran um, to arriving to the U.S. eventually. And being here and, you know, all my, you know, immigrant stories of like being bullied and, and you know, not fitting in and feeling lost and then going back to Iran after all these years and still feeling even even more lost and, and feeling less of a self a place of uh, a sense of place and my I don't know, like, I guess I've always been trying to understand why we have this need for nationality, why we have need for religion, why we have need a need for any of these things. And I think that's what my work questions as well. Like it's, 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 I've, I've always cringe when someone's like Iranian American 
God forbid they add the religious aspect of it because I don't believe in any shape or form of organized religion. I'm just uh, spiritual um, and I believe in energy. And it really makes me uncomfortable when people are like, yeah, but what was your mom or what was your grandmother? As if religion is something that you're like born into or it's forced down your throat. Like it just doesn't, you know, that you have to believe it wholeheartedly or it's, or it's fake, you know? So I just, um, I felt like, always very uncomfortable because I never felt any of these labels really um, made sense to me. And I just felt like, you know, I literally don't feel, you know, a difference between me and my dog or like me and a cat or me and a, a cow or a pig or an ant or whatever. We're all living beings on this planet, sharing this planet. Um, and that's why I don't eat animals because to me it's like bizarre. Like we force impregnate animals and then we eat their babies. We chain them up. We like in, you know, huge like factories and we force impregnate them and, and eat their babies. We force impregnate them over and over again. It's so barbaric and so bizarre. And I just like, I don't understand it. And I wish people would stop doing it because you know, my dogs are my family. All animals are, are our family. We're all family. Like that's, you know, so it's like, for me, like, it's just, we're all these, you know, living, living beings f stuck to this ball that's floating. And we really don't know how the hell we got here, where we're going, what any of this means. And everyone just acts so freaking crazy while we're on it. It's like war after war, like, you know, lack of animal rights and lack of human rights and this chaos my dog is like what are you talking about are you talking about me let me bring him up and it's just like it's so bizarre to me because um i think my work is also besides the spiritual aspect of it of like downloading this information from you know a place that's really unknown and bizarre to me um it's also like um me questioning nationalism me questioning the sense this need for a sense of country, me questioning um, what all of this means. None of this makes sense to me. That's the truth of it. None of this has ever made sense to me. The way people behave, the way we treat each other, the way we treat animals, um, the way people kill each other for a flag or sense, you know, a na you know, for nationality, for you know, having more property like why are we the only living beings on this planet that pay rent to live here like none of this makes any sense to me killing each other for like because someone's sexual preference or because someone's the color of their skin like it's so bizarre it's so ridiculous to me like i don't understand it and i think my work is just my confusion it's a reflection of my constant confusion. Like, are you serious? We're still having these conversations? There's places where they tell people how they have to dress or they go to jail and get tortured to death? I, <laughs> what? Like, I don't, you know, it's just bizarre to me. Like, we we still have, you know, uh, places that, like, literally, like, it, I, the fact that there's even a difference between a man and a woman the, the, the fact that like people care about people's sexual preferences, the fact that if I get pregnant, other people decide if I'm going to have a human being come out of my body. These things are bizarre to me. I think they're insane. I don't understand anything that's going on on this planet. War in general is the most chaotic, crazy, barbaric thing. It's as upsetting as factory farming, raping animals and eating their babies wearing their skin like what are we cavemen like why do we have a need for leather or fur anymore like these things do not make sense and like there's an animal like walking down the street what compels you like what goes to your mind like i'm gonna go attack that animal kill it rip its skin off and wear it as a coat or or a bag like i i, I don't i don't understand it this is like like i understand when we were in caves but in 2022 where we have phones in our pockets we're still raping and eating animals and wearing their dead skin and calling it fashion. I, I just, I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get any of this. And we're like starting another war right now. And all these things are just like, it's bizarre to me. It's bizarre to me. And that's what the work is. And yes, uh, I was born in Iran and I came to the U.S. And, you know, you know, there's all that like backstory of where, you know, 
that kind of like you think, okay, that if reflect it definitely the work definitely reflects all that, all my memories, all my memories, all my experiences. But a lot of it is just what? What is going on? Like what is wrong with people? A lot of it is just that. Like seriously bizarre. Like that we're literally like killing each other for the most ridiculous things in the world. And like we should literally like the fact that we're all here and like people like die at different times and they come at different times and and we we just we really don't like understand any of this is where I'm going with this like we really do not understand any of this and everyone is trying so hard to make sense of it but we just come and go and come and go and like you know is it reincarnation is the, is it what is it energy what happens to us where do we go how do we the experiences we have you know just looking at your hands like it, this stuff should be so intriguing to us like you i look in my dog's eyes and i i mean she's the same as me we just speak a different language i i mean i have no right to kill anyone i i didn't give anyone life and and i and the fact that we distinguish between animals and humans like we're superior is so bizarre to me i i, I who i don't know where that concept came from that's ridiculous ridiculousness and we spend so much energy and time on producing guns and different tools to torture animals and factory farms and kill people and I just and like hunt and I, I just this this is such a waste of energy and time. I don't understand these things and the work is a reflection of that. Like just behind me, like I work with a lot of hands and a lot of feet and you know these are guns and these are police batons and you know it's a lot of like tools and weapons and and ridiculous things that um, humans invent in order to what like you know like make a better quality of life for us i <laughs> i don't it's just bizarre to me none of this makes any sense and that's what the work is about how none of this makes any sense to me and i'm just questioning it and questioning um human behavior and that's what the work is about really like the human condition like this constant you know like love, hate, pain, fear. Like why there's there have to be so much suffering? Like that I think hurts me the most. I'm constantly rescuing animals and fostering and helping people and animals, anyone that I can. I don't want to see anything living in pain. And I don't understand why there has to be so much of it. And that's what the work is about. The titles are sometimes they come across very romantic. Um, because for me, it's it's a constant... You know, it's a constant battle between brutality and something beautiful and poetic. Because I think if, you know, the stuff that I see happening to animals and people is so barbaric and brutal and unforgiving and raw. And sometimes, I mean, I have like, I in general have PTSD and I have trauma and I have a lot of like stuff that I'm always working through. Um, I had serious uh, issues with addiction and depression and anxiety and it's just been it's been a con it's a lifelong thing that i'm dealing with um and i think that's where the poetry comes in because i think dealing with that much pain and trauma and all this stuff myself in my, my inside of me and then seeing it outside constantly all the time everywhere if there wasn't that little bit of poetry I don't know if I would have been able to survive this life. I don't know if I would have been able to make it this far. So I think, and again, I, I don't even know if this has anything to do with anything that I just said. This is just my interpretation. I just know that it comes to me. The idea is everything comes to me. I can't explain it. I have to make it. I'm compelled to make it. Um, it drives me insane until I make it. Um, and it's everything to me, it's everything. It's what I came here to do. I'm, I'm completely clear about that. It's the only thing that gives me a sense of anything, like anything real. Like I, if I don't make this work, I think I would have definitely gone crazy. I would have killed myself, gone crazy, <laughs> like jumped off a bread. I, I just, I wouldn't have been able to sustain myself for this long. And I think that it's the work is, I'm here to make this work and at the same time the work heals me 
and sustains me and keeps me going from one day to the next. It really is, it's everything to me. Um, and that combination, it's like brutal poetry, like brutalism and harsh, unforgiving, like aggression with this soft, like wind, this like, this like beautiful poeticness that comes through and, and that's the work and that that's the work and a little bit of magic because I, I, I can't, I, I'm not doing this. There's something else. There's something above and beyond what I'm capable of doing. It's, it's a little bit of magic.